Greetings everyone and uh, welcome to my uh, new YouTube channel. Never had a YouTube channel before, so this is my first time. And please bear with me with my English. Uh, it's a little bit rusty, uh, so I hope it will be better in time. Um, okay, uh, my name is Tatiana Ulvierte. Ulvierte, which in English means wolf heart, which is my legal name, but also, uh, most of all, it is my spiritual name. I am from Norway. This is where I currently live right now. Uh, I live up in the hillside, uh, alongside beautiful nature and wildlife. Uh, it's quiet and peaceful. So I love it here. So I will just start off um, by, yeah, talking a little bit, a little bit about the purpose of uh, this YouTube channel. Mm. At the time, I do have a, a, also I have a website, which is www.etcn.no. Uh, uh, which uh, which is also the reason for why I also want to have a YouTube channel to link up to the website. So please visit my website for more information if it is of interest. So uh, this being the first time I ever have a YouTube channel, I hope uh, first of all it's going to be very exciting to me. I, I, I'm a little bit nervous right now, but I hope it will... Um, go well and calm as, as, we, long, as we go along and, but most, most of all I hope it will be uh, informative and very inspiring both to me and uh, those of you who wants to join me. So uh, back to the purpose uh, of this YouTube, YouTube channel and for my website uh, it is hopefully uh, to engage and inspire and also to raise awareness of the existence uh, of enlightened extraterrestrial and terrestrial uh, beings from various multidimensional realities. So, um, yeah, I will, on this channel I will share my story, my personal story, uh, alongside with my experiences and, and, and stories I've had since childhood with contact uh, with these enlightened beings. Um, so, but I will just start off by uh, telling you a little bit more about my family background. So, my uh, inheritance is both from the the indigenous people of Norway, the Sami people, uh, and uh, also the American indigenous people, the Lakota Sioux. I was born into and grew up with uh, the Sami people uh, and that culture and learned a little bit later on, maybe in very early teens, that I also uh, originated from uh, the American indigenous people, the Lakota Sioux. It all started um, at a very young age when I used to play uh, cowboys and Indian and I, and I was always preferred to be an Indian. So I had gathered a lot of feathers and, and had clothes with fringes on and so on and so on. And I was obsessed uh, with playing an Indian and my mother, I, I remember my mother came to me one day and she said that I can see uh, that you are very, very obs uh, obsessed with this Indian, uh, interest in the Indians. And then she started telling me the story that I, I actually had the indigenous uh, background. And as soon as I learned uh, that I had, um, it all fell to place. I, I felt that I finally came home into a missing link inside of me. So uh, I remember that then I didn't, I, I wasn't so obsessed with it anymore. It's just, 
it was like it's just integrated uh, that I was that it was true that that I had dreams and I played and I had visions about native people uh, so when it really became true it kind of settled uh, into me which is very <laughs> exciting in a way Growing up with the Sami people and that kind of culture uh, was very good because as a child um, I was very close to, to nature, the silence and the peacefulness of nature and wildlife and animals. We, had, we were bringing a lot of our time out in nature and uh, I think that was a good thing for me as a child because I started having very odd and strange and you can say weird experiences at a very very early age but uh, that also made me to who I am today and also is the reason for me sharing my story and hopefully this story will be inspiring and and strengthen, strengthening to, to those of you who also have experienced and the similar things as I have since childhood. Um, uh, I didn't consider myself as a very normal uh, child, as a normal child in society. Uh, I never was, I am still not to these days. So, but it started at a very, very early age when I had my first extraterrestrial encounter with this beautiful, beautiful light ship. I think it was in the early 70s. Uh, I think I was, I must have been about around four or five years old. It was winter time and it was, it was full moon. Uh, it was me and I think it was my mother and one of my aunts yeah, we decided we wanted to go for a walk uh, a bit uh, up in the hillside a beautiful place where you can have you can watch you know the, the mountains and, and the sky so we started walking it was cold but it was beautiful it was the, the moon was lightening everything up so I can still remember it today as it just was yesterday uh, and then we came up there on the hillside I remember I was just paralyzed and amazed about this light uh, standing there next to the moon and I do recall saying uh, to my mother I think it was and, and my aunt I believe it was because I talked to my cousin and she could, you know, confirm that it that we were going together on this on this walk. So I was watching this light that was next to the moon and I remember saying, Oh look, there are two moons in the sky. And I was amazed about that. Uh, I knew that the one was the moon, but what was the other thing? What was the other? It was like a big ball of light. It was a little bit egg-shaped and it had this beautiful aura of color around it. And I was just paralyzed. All I could see was this light and, and I couldn't take my eyes off of it. And I remember looking at it and I said, look, it's getting, it's getting bigger and bigger and it's even bigger than the moon. And I could see the light just descending from the sky next to the moon. And it was, it, it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And I was just amazed. I, I just think I was lost in that light, in that experience. Um, and the next moment I remember was that we were suddenly standing outside the house again or the porch and and uh, I could I could recall that my mother and my aunt was frightened it, I could feel that they were frightened and they didn't want to 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 be experience, experiencing this anymore 
but I, I didn't want to listen to it, so I just stood looking at it. Now the light was uh, withdrawn a little bit, so it was not as big um, as it was before. So it just had uh, this um, ascended a little bit, and I, I still was looking at it. And I remember looking, and I could feel this tremendous, tremendous love, and also with that love, uh, sorrow and loneliness, and 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 I was so, I I really wanted this light to just come and pick me up, and take me home. That's what I remember, the feeling I had. I wanted it to just take me home because there was a familiar feeling with that light. It was like there was something very, very familiar. And then I could see the light getting smaller and smaller and smaller next to the moon and then it just took off. It vanished and it went away and then it was just a darkness next to the moon. And that really ripped my heart up, a heart apart. It really ripped my heart. It broke my heart literally to, to experience this tremendous power of love emanating from this light and then for it to just just vanish. Uh, I was I remember I wasn't the same that day, the morning after. It was like being a, a child and then suddenly something happens that you just switch from being a child and then to to have your um, consciousness so expanded that you it felt like I was a, a grown-up in a small body and I started having views and, and, and visions and just I was thinking and feeling and observing things in a different way than I know today that few, few children who doesn't have had this experience would, uh, would experience, would have. So, but the thing is that nobody talked about this experience. I, I, even though I have confirmed later on the years that there was several in the, in the area where I lived then uh, with my mother, that several people had seen the same thing. And, and I think also several people in my family. But nobody talked about it. We didn't talk about it afterwards because I, I think it was such a mind-blowing experience. So I think it was pr probably very hard and weird for people to talk about. So after that time, as I said, I was never the same and I started to, I was very quiet. After that, I, I experienced myself as very quiet and I started observing things around me, especially people, grown-ups, the way the social structure was, why people did what they did, and I, I questioned everything. I, I questioned everything. And, and I, um, I, seeked, I seeked the answers from, from then, then on. So after the, the experience with this extraterrestrial light shape, it, it really changed me in, in a profound way that it, it, it left an imprint inside of me, both in my consciousness and in my body and in my heart to be, th to, I, I was driven, driven to, to find out of this. I, I wanted to know, I just wanted to know uh, what this was and why I had this experience, experience. And, and also why people, people didn't talk about it. Uh, several years uh, several, later on in my, in my adulthood uh, I mentioned it uh, and people in my family started confirming uh, the experience that they also had seen it but they didn't talk too much about it. They also wondered to, to this day what it was. So I think they just left it with that experience. Uh, and, and I also heard s several people in my family had similar experiences, uh, still living up north, where I came from before I moved here, uh, here in the south. 
so they had uh, several experiences. But tempers are always a drive, a, 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 a feeling of seeking out what this was. Uh, it never left me. So I just I started when I so when I, I grew up, it, it just it was with me, and I'm sure I was I couldn't I can just leave it. Because when you have these experiences like this, you can't just, you can't go back and live the life you used to live. It changes you completely. Really. Completely changes your life and the, the view you have on things, your mind, your consciousness. and Yeah, so um, I was constantly driven to find out what this was, why it happened to me, what it was. and. Yeah. Uh, when I got a little bit older, I think uh, it was uh, probably a little bit later in my teens. My cousin and I was uh, sitting and, and talking about these things because we I wondered uh, again because it it, it, it drove me nuts. I had to find out what it was. So we was sitting there in my mother's home talking about this, wondering, looking at the stars, wondering about uh, if there was life out there. Uh, of course in my heart I knew it was, but I just felt that I needed to talk to, to somebody, to have someone to wonder what, wondered what these things were. So we talked about it, started talking about it, yeah, and, and then, and then my grandmother, my grandmother on my mother's side, showed up and she was a very very grounded and native woman she was very close to nature she didn't watch tv she didn't read a newspaper and stuff like that she just lived by and, and, and with nature so she, she started and she didn't talk too much she was very wise only time she talked was when she had a very strong opinion about something and everybody in the family needed to hear. And then she made her voice uh, very clear and loud. So while me and my cousin sitting there talking about this, uh, I don't believe I told about what I had experienced. I, so, but we started talking and, and, and my grandmother said, Oh, wait a minute. Uh, what are you talking about? It actually happened to me, she said. And we were just amazed. Our jaw just dropped to our knees. And I was thinking, did, did we just hear what she said? Yeah, she said she had had an experience with extraterrestrial beings out there. And she started talking about it. And she sat down and, and her story was we have this summer place this place we used to go to at summertime this house a family house where all of us us used to travel to there was no roads to this house we had to walk a while to come there and it was very quiet uh, very you know very outside everything Out there was no houses and no nothing around there just the sea and this house and this beautiful mountains in the background and she said she was there I don't remember if she said, if she, said she was there alone but she, it was late at night and she was go, going to go to sleep and then uh, she remembered she just remembered that she was going to go to sleep and then she said that she started to hear this voice a very loud voice in her head because at that time I think except uh, compared to now we have terms that explain a little bit more how we experience things but she said it was a voice talking to her in her head that she needed to get up uh, of bed and, and get out of the house and go down to the to, to the seashore we had a boat house there with boats and everything but the voice just told her just go straight down there and she did she started walking down to the boathouse listened to the voice and she said when she came down there there was this craft standing there I, I think she referred to it as a thing 
just a thing standing there, you know, next to the boathouse. And she said that it had a staircase, a staircase who had uh, folded out and unfolded, and, and there was a staircase into this thing. And she was standing there looking at it, and the voice was telling her, you need to please uh, come aboard. Can you come inside? Can we come inside? And, and she just listened to the voice, and she said she just was automatically walking in to the craft, uh, which is of course some extraterrestrial craft, uh, as she explained it, um, which I can link to and confirm to very other, pe uh, other people's experiences. So she went on this craft and she said when she came into this craft it was this big big room full of light. It was just this amazing white light and she couldn't see anything or anyone. And then she could hear this voice talking again. Which the voice was very calming, soothing and, and very reassuring so she was not afraid. She was not afraid at all she said. And she just kept talking about this experience and I, I think my jaw just was still dropped to my knees. It was amazing. And, uh, and, and I'm, I, used to, I, I remember I was thinking, how, how can my grandma have experienced things like this? She, why hadn't she talked about it? And, and uh, that was just awesome. And, uh, but today I know it was a reason why she told us and why Actually, we became most of all the only ones she told it to because we we were talking about it, me and my cousin. Anyway, inside this craft, she said uh, that the the beings or the, the voices in her head told her to come inside and and have a seat, just sit down. And and she said uh, she she thought that was a little bit odd because there were no chairs in this spacecraft. It was just light all over the place. There was no chairs, and uh, so. But they told her to just sit down and relax. So she said, "Okay, never mind. I will sit down." And she said she just sat down in the air. It was like sitting down in the air. She couldn't see a chair, but she sat down and she she was sitting. And she said it was very weird because there was nothing there, there was no chair there and anything, and she had a childlike um, excitement to it when she told us this. Uh, so, which, there were so many things she said and the way she said it that this was really, really authentic. She was not kidding around and this was a true experience for her. So, while sitting there, she said that these beings were telling her or this voice she could hear several voices I think she said or at least she felt that there was more people there or more beings there so she she said that they wanted to take her on a trip and that she should not be afraid that when they were done showing her around or taking her on this trip they would uh, they would put her down again. So she did not need to worry. But of course my grandmother, very grounded and close to nature and her house and things and her life on the ground, she started getting worried. She, but f most of all she was worried about what to eat. There was nothing there. So how long would she be gone? And what should she be, what would she eat? So she started worrying about these things, which I thought was very, uh, <laughs> very funny in a way, but very sweet also. It was very typical of my grandmother to think about those things, because she was the one who, you know, took care of our the, the, uh, us, the children, and feeding us and, and taking care of us, that we had everything we needed. So it was kind of funny. And, and she said, she said, okay. I'll go with you. And then I, I remember she said that she um, went, she, she she stood up, she stood up and went to this side of where the light was. It was a light wall, kind of. And she said she looked outside and she could see, 
if she could see our place, the summer place we have, the house and the boat house and the mountains and the, and the, and the sea, she could see that. And then she just stood there and watching this and she could see uh, the whole place, the house, the sea, everything getting smaller and smaller and smaller as the, the ship was um, ascending. So she was, I remember she said she was a little bit worried because this was, uh, she could, I think she could feel that she was not just going on a, a trip alongside the house or, or going for a walk. This was something very different. And um, she explained that because she could see things getting smaller and smaller and smaller and, and at the end she could see the earth as a small, small ball. So the earth was like a ball, maybe a size of a tennis ball, maybe smaller, I'm not sure. Uh, and, and of course she was still worried, um, but they uh, reassured her that she's just not, she should not be worried. And uh, then I think she said that suddenly she found herself in her bed in the house. But she said that she never went to bed and went to sleep. She just came to herself lying there, aware again, or, or, or just lying in the bed, knowing that she never went to sleep, but had had this experience. So she's, she, so uh, I think she told us that this happened. So she had carried this experience for years and years without telling anybody. And we asked her why she didn't tell it, because we totally believed her, um, absolutely, and we reassured her that, that this, this must have been true, and we believed her. So, and she said that she was so afraid of telling people, especially grown-ups, the other grown-ups in the family, her, her family, about it, because she was afraid that they would lock her up. That's why, you know, lock her up, put her away for being crazy. So that's why she didn't tell anything. And, oh boy, I'm, I, I'm really grateful and, and happy that she did tell us about this because her telling us a story had made a huge difference to me uh, with continuing my work, uh, with this kind of work, to you know, to enlighten and be, to awaken uh, about these things, the existence of extraterrestrial and terrestrial phenomena, ET, extraterrestrial beings, that do exist out there. And, um, and the profound thing with her experience was, she said herself that she used to be very, very frightened frightened of the dark. She always had a, a, a flashlight walking between the houses and walking around at the, in the evening and the night time she always used a flashlight and she was she was very afraid of the dark but she said after this experience she had with extraterrestrial beings on this craft she said all her fears went away she didn't she didn't have those fears anymore and she didn't have to use a flashlight while walking outside either. So, and not just, and not, it was not just afraid of the darkness that disappeared with this experience. She also said very clearly that after that, she wasn't afraid of dying. She wasn't afraid of dying anymore. And that I think it was very very interesting and very profound and it all oh, just her experience and alongside with my own experience with this light ship at age four or five I think it was uh, has had a profound impact on my life so that's why I'm sharing this story today and I was that's why I also have this YouTube channel because I had over the years since that time I've had several encounters with extraterrestrial beings over the years moving from northern Norway 
uh, where I was brought up to starting school and starting working. I moved to to Oslo, south in Norway, and starting my young life there. My 20s and up there, but it didn't stop there. Um, I just had continuous experiences, uh, outer-worldly experiences with extraterrestrial beings, which I, of course, will um, talk about a little bit more. I will share my experiences and my stories. I think sharing stories is very important because it is very... It, when we share stories, it brings people together uh, so we can be together because I'm not the only one in this world who had this experience. It's, it's millions of people who have had this experience. Some choose to talk about it, some do not. But I choose to talk about it because I hope that in some way, somehow, it will contribute to the greater good in some way. Because alongside these extraterrestrial experiences, there have come profound insights, wisdom, visions, uh, philosophies that I wouldn't have had if it wasn't for this, these experiences. So I believe that these things are the purpose of my life here and also a passion I have, a passion to tell my story, share my story, to unite people so that people one day will come together as one and view life such as. So uh, I will come, I will talk about some of the other experiences I've had. So uh, until uh, next time, uh, I wish you all well and I will come back sharing some more stories and experiences. But uh, until then, uh, Namaste. I wish you all the best. I see you again and please uh, uh, visit my website www.etcn.no Yeah, please have a watch and come visit. Until then, I'll see you and be kind.